I couldn't wait. I wanted to shoot this thing. Model 36 Chief Special. Hickok 45 bringing it to you. It's nice to be able to take a close up look of it and see what's on the table, but these guns are for shooting, aren't they? <laughs> Yes, this is a classic, and uh, I know you can tell by looking at it, we've got the original grips on it, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's one of those guns you could uh, describe uh, as, as is, quote-unquote. You know, it's uh, got some wear. Someone has bobbed the hammer on it. Not me this time. Uh, found it used a year or so ago. And just a classic. I don't think I've actually had one of these. I've had some modern versions of it but not one just like this. And as you can tell by looking at it, it, uh, it has character, it has character. Chief Special, why is it called the Chief Special? No, doesn't come from the reservation. Uh, it is, this gun was introduced, this 38 Special, by Smith & Wesson at the, was it the 1950, uh, was it the International Association of Chiefs of Police, you know, we're meeting in Colorado. And that was the year they introduced it at that, that meeting. And from what I understand, and I'm not clear on exactly how I did, they got some input from the actual attendees, I think, in, to, in terms of what to call this new new revolver. Uh, and it was a, whatever, however it was done, it was kind of, a, I guess, a stroke of genius to call it the Chief Special. And that's what it was called. Uh, if you're like me, sometimes, you know, we don't know about every firearm out there. We hear them called different things, different numbers. Uh, different names, just like the cartridges, you wonder, well, what's a 3220, and all the numbers, it can be confusing. I recall uh, when I was younger hearing people talk about a Chief Special and a Model 36, and I was never really sure what they were talking about. I think I knew what a Model 36 is. What, now, what's the Chief Special? Is that a different gun? Well, I'm here to clarify that for you, no extra charge. So they started out calling this the uh, Chief Special in 1950, and that was the name of the gun, you know, until 1957 when Smith & Wesson went to the numbers system, you know, and then it's a Model 36. Okay, so the Chief Special, Model 36, the same gun, newsflash, to me and everybody. So, uh, and of course it's appropriate that it's called the Chief Special. I wonder how many thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands perhaps, of, uh, of police officers have carried this firearm, whether it be a detective, a uniformed officer as a backup, uh, untold numbers of uh, citizens, uh, just you name it. This is one of the most uh, iconic firearms, I think, really of the 20th century. It came around 1950. I think they made it from 1950 to about 1999. Now it still has uh, it's still out there, basically, in different versions, different metals, you know. And I mean, you look at the Smith and Wesson website or their catalog. I, I gave up long ago trying to keep track of them. To tell you the truth, they've got guns made of scandium and uh, uh, different alloys, aluminum alloy. Uh, my little air weight over here, I brought out to, to kind of show you. I like that. It has a steel cylinder, but it has a, an aluminum alloy frame. And that's considered pretty mundane because now they've got them out of titanium and uh, scandium and everything else under the sun. And they're all the J-frame pretty much. Even though the, the newer J-frames are just a tad larger. Uh, I, I have read that and I, I didn't really know that than the early J-frames, but they're very, very similar and very close. They, I think they're, the J-frames now are made with the same cylinder length so that they can be chambered or so they make the same gun essentially in a 357 Magnum with a longer, you know, chamber with a longer cartridge or something. But even if it's a 38 Special, okay, but they're about the same size. J frame, you know, it's uh, it's one of those guns that it's hard to shoot well, maybe, but up close and dirty, you know, they get the job done. There's no telling how many people still rely on one of these guns right here. Maybe an old one just like this, you know, uh, just you could do worse. You know, this gun, this one was made in 1969, but of course it's just like the ones made in 1950, 1953. No different. Five shot, 38 special, 38 special catches a lot of flack, of course, for being a weak sister round, like nine millimeter, but we know it, it is uh, very, very lethal. And five shots generally is plenty, you know, so you can see the attraction. When you think going back into the, uh, let me load it up on me, I can, the, uh, I don't know, 1950s, 60s, 70s, you didn't have all these cool little uh, car and Glock uh, 
automatic, semi-automatics that would uh, fit in your pocket, that kind of thing. So this was the gun. This was the gun. Uh, I, I have seen people, I had a friend whose dad, his, he's passed away now. Uh, he Old school, you know, he's like 20, 30 years older than I am. And I, I know that he carried one of these in his back pocket, you know, round, round the farm and everywhere he went. You know, they're just, uh, just something that most people are familiar with if they've been around very long. Model 36, what a classic. Let's take up more shots with it. Now, I don't know if I can hit anything with it. I'm not going to change the grips out. Actually, this one belongs to John. I think I got this for John. I, uh, I, I'm just going to leave those on there because those are original, and uh, that's, just, that's just what this gun needs. I've got the modern guns if I want a better grip that fits better. Uh, so let's see if we can hit anything with it anyway. Uh, let's see if I can pop those little cans there. All right. <laughs> uh, it seems to shoot right on, if I can. Oh, one got away. Oh, maybe not. I believe that's all, isn't it? That's not. Shot over. Okay. Good old revolver. You know, it's hard to hate a revolver. Uh, they work, it, it, you know, swing out cylinder. It's pretty obvious how you load them. There's just uh, nothing complicated about them. They just work. And I think that's one of the attractions of these old guns, all steel, wood, uh, very clear how the thing operates. You know, uh, in the last 20, 30 years, it seems like everything changes so fast, whether it's, you know, computer technology, cars, and good old gun like this, made in the 1950s, designed in 1950, or designed in 1890 even, uh, it still does what it was designed to do. And there's no, there's no new computer chip that's gonna come out of Southern California that's gonna change the way this thing works very much, I don't think, <laughs> uh, and make it more effective. You know, five shots of 158 grain lead, it's gonna still do the job. Okay, why don't we uh, get ambitious? <laughs> And see if I can get one near the gong with this thing. Okay. All right. The nice sound. <laughs> that one must have hit lower because it was louder. Genius, aren't I? That one must have missed because I didn't hear anything. And another miss. We've got to end on a hit. There we go. All right. That's three out of five. I'll take that with this thing. <laughs> I think I was going a little low maybe on that last one. Oh, man, what a classic. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? Uh, uh, I've seen these guns all through my shooting career I've seen people pull them out of their pockets I've seen policemen you know pull up their pants leg and they've got one of these you know in, a, in an ankle holster uh, I also saw as I was searching around the web uh, uh, a survey that was done by was it police.com or something like that it was recent this past summer asked how many people still shot revolvers or carried revolvers and the numbers were pretty big 10 percent uh, responded that they still carry a revolver for backup 10%, that's in the year 2012. I think that's the year we're in right now. And uh, it may not be an old Model 36, it might be a newer one like this that has the concealed hammer, you know. And, uh, and this is nice because it, the way it's designed enables you, because of the hammer configuration being underneath, you can get your hand up a little bit higher, you get a little bit of a higher bore axis on it, and they shoot really well. You don't have any snags, you know, that gun is, is very empty, right? Now you want a holster. But I mean, they'll, they'll, you know, they just tuck away, and uh, even in the pocket holster, you know, it's like a wallet, you know, in your pocket. Uh, and this gun would work the same way. The hammer is a little bit of an issue, and that's why somebody, you know, ground that one down. And uh, you know, it would still, they could have ground it off entirely, and then just rely on double action, which is what you would do in defensive situations anyway. But uh, just a, an, an icon, and we have some iconic. Two liters there need to be shot. Now, I brought out, actually bought this this morning, some uh, premium 
federal ammo here, hollow points. These are not plus P. I think you could shoot a plus P in this and it's not going to explode or anything, but it's not recommended. Uh, but you could probably carry that if you wanted. Uh, again, I wouldn't recommend it. But these are some good, uh, uh, you know, federal self-defense uh, rounds right here. Modern ammo that you could carry in this gun. And you could get a, put it in a pocket holster, just like this. And there might be one that's maybe more suitable that has a hammer, I don't know. But that tucks away pretty well. And this gun, after all these years, you know, I mean, it still could serve you pretty well as a, as a backup or as a primary weapon if you needed it. Pull that thing out. It's protected. The trigger's protected. Even the hammer's protected. It's not going to snag on anything. And uh, just a nice gun. Now, this, these will have a little bit of a kick to it, I guess. We'll see. Let's try. I'll go double action on that red uh, play right there. It. There we go. And let's try one since it's a hollow point on this two liter. <laughs> there you go. Now let's try one on another two liter. I don't know, the point of aim might be a little different. All right. Another round. Let's try that other guy. All right. Not bad. I mean, you can bear down and actually hit something with this gun. That, that's, I mean, it's not all that far away, but you got a target that, I mean, I pointed at myself. You know, that big around, and uh, I forget what that is. Uh, is it 20 yards, 25 yards or something. Uh, you know, an old gun like this, an old design, and it will still do what it's supposed to do. Let's put in a 158 grain or two. I got some uh, of these. The only difference is the heavier bullet. Those were 130 grain, the PMC. The 38 Special, very comfortable to shoot, generally speaking. You wouldn't classify this as a target gun if you wanted to get uh, one, a youngster or a spouse involved in shooting. You wouldn't necessarily you know, buy a gun this small, but uh, a Model 10 would be better or anything, a 38 Special, for that. But uh, this is a pretty effective round and it's, uh, it's just a very versatile round. There's just so many different loadings available. And uh, we've got, hopefully, not surveillance coming over overhead to check on me because I am not breaking any laws. <laughs> let's see, I'll take a couple of shots at the, let's try these at the gong. Try that turkey while I'm feeling frisky. It'll probably humble me here. Oh man, I think I saw it. I tell you what, I mean, I missed him, but I can tell where I'm hitting. Those sights are—they are right on, and that's always nice when you got to pick sights if it's uh, lined up well, because they're very, very difficult to change, right? So. The Model 36, an American classic. Uh, this, uh, you know, partly uh, Smith Wesson brought this out to compete with uh, Colt. They had uh, made the, what was it, the Detective Special. I had one of those way back, and there's another gun I let go. I traded somebody, sold to somebody that wanted it, a friend of mine. And uh, I think he still has it, a Detective Special, which is a little bit bigger than the uh, Smith J frame. It, it's a six shot gun. So that made it a little more attractive. But you don't get six rounds in unless you have a bigger cylinder. Pretty smart, aren't I? Takes more room for another round. Uh, so it, it's always a trade-off. It, 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 it still is today, isn't it? You know, we, we, we have these cool guns like an XDS 45 caliber. Really a small gun. Pretty cool. Except it only holds five or six rounds. You know, there's just a trade-off. You know, to have more rounds or have bigger rounds, you need a bigger gun. See, I just get smarter all the time. I figure all that out. Uh, so for this size, uh, this was pretty size efficient, and that's one reason it was so popular. I think it was actually more popular than the Detective Special, and that's a nice gun. That gun, I always felt like it was more of a belt gun. Uh, 
Whereas this gun could be a belt gun or a pocket gun. And, uh, you know, ankle holster gun, and of course the detective special could too. But, wow, ask any police officer, especially any older police officer, maybe any gangster, you know, if you are living in Chicago from back in the you know, 50s or 60s, they will know this gun, uh, the Model 36. Good old revolvers are hard to beat. They're just really special. I, you know, what else can you say? They're just special guns and uh, they're, they're fun to, to shoot. They're, they're fun to clean and take apart and uh, just, just admire for the history and then the shootability, uh, the effectiveness that just really never goes away. So uh, good old Chief Special Model 36, life is good.